Welcome to T-Bone Speaks with Dr. Tarun Agarwal, where our goal is to change the way you practice dentistry by helping you achieve clinical, financial, and personal balance. Now, here's your host, T-Bone. Is welcome back to another week of the T-Bone Speaks podcast. You know, as usual, I'm joined by my co-host, Meredith Cooper-Jones. Meredith, how are you doing? Hello, I'm good. You know, usually I just switch to you for all the reviews, but I yeah. figured I'd do something a little bit different this time. <laughs> yeah. But uh, listen, this week we're going to be doing a new segment, uh, part of the podcast, where we're going to call it My First Implant. And we're going to bring on one of the attendees from our digital implant continuum, uh, our live patient treatment program for those of you that want to learn implants. And it's not necessarily a sales pitch of what we're doing. Now, certainly we want you to come to our program, but it's really about kind of diving into the mindset and, and the mind of what goes through one's mind and what, what, what fears are coming up and how do we overcome these uh, as we kind of add implants. And especially true for you, those of you that are my generation of dentists in your 40s. You know, we didn't grow up in dental school even thinking implants were a possibility for us. So we want to talk to uh, Dr. Lane Barker this week about that. But before we move over to Dr. Barker, let's uh, turn it over to Meredith and give Meredith uh, our sales pitch for the <laughs> week. You think that's all that I do around here? Yes, okay. yes, 100%. <laughs> that's all you do. That and set up king-size beds. Yeah, <laughs> by myself. <laughs> of course. Well, speaking about putting together lots of beds, we have some exciting news at 3D Dentist. We have a 3D retreat house where our attendees can now stay Airbnb resort style for our courses. So we would love to have you attend, stay with our instructors, and enjoy lots of learning all weekend long. I think yeah, it's lots of fun. You know, I, beyond the fun part, I think really what I think of the retreat as is a place for like-minded individuals to geek out mm -hmm. about dentistry. You know, too often, um, so many of us that listen to podcasts yeah. that really want to take our practice to another level and stay up to date, we go to, we go to CE events and, you know, we want to talk and interact and there's not enough of that in our local area. So really what we're trying to do is amp up the game a little bit and give people a place to geek out and really kind of really just die, immerse into dentistry and being around good people. And there's so much that we talk about. You know, we always talk about so much about how much we learn outside of the class. Yeah. And so we're giving it to where basically the class is 24 hours a day. Yeah. So we'll see. I, I, uh, just this past weekend. I mean, I like everyone talks about their wins, but they also talks about their losses. And yeah. it's just a safe place where everyone, they feel like they have support and they feel like they can share all that. So I'm excited for everyone. It's more work for all of us, but yeah. I love it. I'm ex I, More I, king beds for me to put together and mattresses to harass Well, not everybody gets king beds. Some people yeah. get queens or... Bunk beds. Or bunk beds, the all-on-four room. Yeah. <laughs> so. We're naming them. So there's, there's a little bit more work, but we'll have a new training center, and we're super excited to have you guys all here in Raleigh. Um, but before we get started, I do have a Google review. A Google review, mm -hmm. yeah. So that's new. Yeah. Uh, so if you want to, uh, we're, you know, I think... 3D dentists, just like with your practices, we rely on Google as well to help build our uh, build our business. So we've been asking for Google reviews. Uh, the podcast reviews are nice and they're helpful to get the podcast out there, but we really want to uh, amp up our Google game. So if you don't mind leaving us a review for 3D dentists on Google, that would be phenomenal. Uh, so Meredith, what's our review this week? Education at 3D Dentist is unmatched. I've taken several courses at their facility and it has truly transformed my practice to a point where I can work less and still grow my practice. The accountability and accessibility of the educators here is what makes it so valuable to be able to implement what was learned in the courses. Highly recommend. Who's that from? Thanks, Dr. Amy Connor. <laughs> Okay, Amy. Amy just writes nice things about me. I'm pretty sure you you write you wrote that Meredith and signed her name. No, I did um, not. All right. She truly thinks that though. No, guys, no, Amy's I'm phenomenal. Sure. We're so proud of Amy. Yeah. Well, let's welcome Dr. Lane Barker. Lane, what's up, my man? Thank you. Not much. How about you guys? Uh, well, with that accent, let's get right into <laughs> Where are you from? <laughs> um I'm actually from born and raised in Athens, Georgia. And, um, are you a bulldog? Yes. Yes. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Your hat. Right. Okay. Yes. Um, uh, went to school there at Georgia. Um, and then went to dental school in 
Augusta Medical College of Georgia. Or Regents University. Or whatever they're calling it or now. Or Augusta yes. University. Yes, yes. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, that's awesome. So, uh, uh, look, Lane, you, you're no spring chicken. You nope. have as much gray hair as me. Uh, so, um, you know, I, I really want to talk to you about getting started with implants. Mm-hmm. Uh, are, is implants new to you? Yes, in the sense of doing them myself. Okay. Um, very familiar with the process. Um, over the years, it's something I'd always wanted to get into, but was just hesitant more so from the financial, um, in, you know, buying in to okay. everything initially is what kind of... Let's talk about that for a second. Okay. Held you back. Yeah. Kind of held you back. From the um, so uh, about 10 or 11 years ago, I got divorced. Okay. And um, so I had some personal uh, obligations that I had to sure. take care of. And I was in another practice with another dentist and was just kind of advised not to disrupt that cart. Okay. Um, so you, even if you wanted to do it, you probably wouldn't have been given the opportunity to, to do it. Yes, correct. Okay. Um, we were both partners. Okay. In the sense. Okay. So it's not that I was an associate. I got you. <clears throat> but uh, more from a financial standpoint, uh, I was just advised to, okay. you know. How much, how, at that time, what did you think starting with implants would cost? Well, I knew the training was, you know, the first obstacle. Yeah. Um, and then, you know, I not knowing which, I mean, there's... This. Lots of systems out yeah. there and buying in, you know, you got to buy a kit, you got to buy the implants. And they don't ever make it easy because they say, they see you as fresh meat and they're like, right. doc, you need 50 implants. <laughs> right. Even though you've never placed one, <laughs> let's get you 50. Yes. So all of that combined, okay. yeah, it was just kind of, uh, just it's something I wanted to do, you know, so I, I got a Serac five years ago. Okay. Which kind of opened the door to um, Serona right. and started learning about CBCT and the integration of it. Okay. And I was like, so I got a CBCT about two and a half years ago. Okay. And then a year and a half ago, I moved and went out on my own. Okay. So I was kind of been getting the pieces of the puzzle together Okay. and now jumping in together. How so. important do you think the technology was in, in, in jumping in? Or was it really just moving to your own place? Um, both. Both. Um, I mean, I think having the technology, you know, to be able to, I mean, CBCT just blows me away. Yeah. What, yeah. What, what you can see on that. Do you think you do implants without it? Mm, I doubt it. You doubt it. Okay. Mm-mm. Knowing what you know now, Mm-mm. would you do it without it? Yeah. And that was probably some of the. Fear. Fear. Okay. Mm-hmm. All right. Um, yeah, and, and then just having it all there together and, you know, learning how they integrate together and trying to figure out which implant course I wanted to take. Well, we'll get to that. Okay. (laughs) But I want, if you don't mind, I'd like to go on a little bit of a tangent. Mm -hmm. Um, you mentioned that you kind of went out on your own Mm -hmm. about a year and a half, a couple of years ago. Start scratch, or did you buy a place? What'd you do? Or did you guys separate, and you took your kind of your patients with you? Yeah, yeah. Okay. We we were it was kind of a unique situation. We were we each owned our own practice okay. within an umbrella so name. You space shared, kind mm-hmm. of. Okay. Yeah, we shared space and staff, and so when I left, it kind of made that process easy okay. because what I had bought. Did some of your team go with you? Yes. Some, okay. Yes. Most? Mm -hmm. Most. Okay. Did who you wanted to go with you? That's a better (laughs) question. (laughs) Did you get a pick? (laughs) Well, I'm not trying to, you know, disparage anybody else, but I'm just trying to understand. All right. Along those same lines, what was it like? How old are you, Lane? I'll be 50 this year. All right. So you're still Mm. young, okay? Mm. I mean, it's not like you're, you're old or anything. Okay? I know we have gray hairs and missing some right. hair. But you'll <laughs> still be working. <laughs> yes. So I wore a hat. <laughs> what was it? I, I, because, look, I, I, I ask this because I'm 46. Mm-hmm. 
Mm-hmm. Am I 46? Yeah, I'm 40. I'm 40. <laughs> no, I'm 45. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you're 45. I'm 45. Um, I'm 45, and I think to myself, could I do what you just did? Could I start over or semi-start over at age 50? What goes through your mind? What's that like? I mean, I'm asking selfishly, not because I want to, I'm, I'm alone, so I wouldn't, you know, like separate out, but. Um, knowing, especially the last six to eight years that that was something I wanted to do was, okay. be, you know, I mean, coming out of dental school, the thought of being alone terrified me. Right. I was like, I felt like I needed, you know, an older right. dentist, uh, partner, somebody to, to go to, but. As as it turns out, I mean, I didn't. We didn't rely on each other in that right. sense as much as I thought I, we would. Okay. And, was, and then, so for the last six or eight years, it's just been more. You know, this is something I want to do. I want to go out on my own, have my own place because I felt like I was indirectly held back. Okay. Where yeah. I was, and and that to 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 develop and grow the practice, I wanted to. I was going to have to be. Are you happy separate. you did this? Oh, my gosh, yes. Yeah? N- hands down. Hands down. Mm-hmm. So the first time I met you, you were in your, uh, you were, I think. A couple been, years ago. It's, sleep, I think you were mm-hmm. still right? with, in your, part, in your space yes. sharing partnership. Correct. Yeah. Yes. You weren't on your own. Correct. And then, um, yeah, that's interesting. Mm-hmm. So looking back, you're happy you're on your own. Yes. It's allowed you some freedom and flexibility, and you probably realized some things you didn't realize at the time sure yeah mm-hmm. all right so okay so getting into implants has been a long-term goal for you for yes. years mm-hmm. there's the fear there's life circumstances <clears throat> there's economic circumstances that have come in the way technology to a certain degree has opened our eyes about i, I always say that technology gives us confidence you know, almost Absolutely. like it's like getting a cape on underneath you mm-hmm. where, you know, you can pick and choose what you do. And right. with surgical guides, it's super not that complicated to place implants. Now you're ready to dive in. And I think part of it is also uh, is the fact that you're on your own. I mean, you got to grow yeah. that. You got to grow it now. Right. Right. You got you don't really have much choice. Right. At this stage. Sink of the game. Or swim. Yeah, <laughs> it is. Right. Because you're taking on more overhead. Mm-hmm. You're taking on a lot of a lot of things. Right. Right. And you went on your own to have the control and kind of do what you want. Uh, so talk to us about the um, the process of what type of education you felt you needed, why you cho- why you chose 3D dentists, and you don't have to say glowing things. You can say not so glowing things too. But <laughs> you can say how mean they were to you. <laughs> we, we, listen, we were pretty tough on you. For they sure. were yes. tough love. Yeah. <laughs> so you can tell them they were they gave you mean nicknames. I mean. Yeah. <laughs> um. I went to I did a so Athens is about you know an hour outside of Atlanta right I did a implant course there in Atlanta a couple years ago okay um a couple weekends okay so um, a couple weekends so, okay but no no live okay type of dance pig jaws all that stuff exactly right okay so that at least kind of opened the door to and of course we learned freehand right not guided I mean, we we reviewed some guided, but, um, and then, um, It was probably a more surgical approach. Correct. Than a restorative GP approach. Correct. Okay. Yes. Um, and then, I, I, um, you know, of course, like you said, I had been to a course of yours a few years ago and then looked into the implant continuum okay. and I, I really enjoy your style of of uh, <laughs> <Browbeating>. tough love, <laughs> <and> it <laughs> but it comes from such a good place. Yes, it does. And, but, and, and, but, but here's what I love, and what I tell people: I don't give everybody the same tough love. You know, somehow yeah. he I, tells us this too. Same thing. <laughs> no, but 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 it's it's beyond what you're talking yeah. about, Meredith. It's it's I try to give everybody tough love, but there are times where you can you can look at somebody and you can say. This guy is going to let me have a little fun with him. Sure. Right? Yeah. And not take it offensively or personally. And to me, 
that just opens me up to connect with. That's my sure. method of connecting with people. I tell Meredith, I tell Michelle, I tell you know all my team members. If I'm not having fun and you know having a good good back and forth, I'm not saying beating people down because that's not my goal. Right? It, it is that me. I I tell them you should probably be worried <laughs> that, you, that, you, that your job's at stake. You know, in your case, your job's not at stake. You know, my job's at stake in, mm -hmm. in theory, right? Mm -hmm. But uh, all right, so. So the live patient was probably what really mattered to you. Yes. Okay. Yes. That right. was invaluable. Okay. So let's talk about the experience of the program. Okay. So what, what did you expect? Because I think you were in our second or first or second, second. class, second program. So you didn't mm -hmm. have a lot of, there wasn't, you, you didn't, there wasn't a lot of like chatter out there about what it is and all of that. Right. What did you expect to learn? What was, what, if anything was a surprise, what was valuable? Talk to us about that. Um, I, I didn't, well, I, I didn't really know what to expect. <laughs> um, <Blind face. laughs> um, I said, you're going to have a good time it's gonna be fun. <laughs> and you're going to play some employees. <laughs> you know, the, the live surgery, I, d I didn't know. I, I didn't know the, we'd be doing extractions the first time, the right. first weekend, mo mostly. So I did a poor job. <laughs> well, no, no, it was. I mean, I mean, I knew we would, but right. I mean, when I initially right said this is what I want to do, I want to go to T Bones yeah. and do this. It wasn't like I knew exactly how it was going to be laid out, right. but I don't um, think we did either. I, I, <laughs> I knew, like when I came out of dental school. Very similar to you, I, I despise extractions. Yeah. I, mean, I decide I, all surgery. They beat you down, man. Yes. And I, it's like, this is not something I feel comfortable Like, doing. if you broke a tooth in dental school, you're like, oh my God. <laughs> I quit. <laughs> no, it's not even I quit. They just make you, it's like, God, I failed. <laughs> um, I ended up coming out of dental school, uh, went to, I forgot how I ran across this exactly, but. Uh, we were still living in Augusta at the time, and I ended up going and working at a female state prison. Oh. And so the majority of what I did was extractions because, that, that, you know, we didn't do root canals and anything like that. It was, it was compromised tooth. We took it out, it, wow. especially if it was um, an inmate that was right. going to be there for a while. So, <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> um, so I worked there about a year and a half. <laughs> <laughs> well, I say that because I know the, I just there was there was one lady in particular that you know she was going to be getting out in a couple months and yeah. number nine yeah had so some probably, problems so I did a root canal okay you know so right. with the hope that once she got out she She'd could get it fixed up right, or whatever right. yeah. have the root canal redone <laughs> <laughs> right, right exactly <laughs> I wasn't going to say that but <laughs> um so but I worked there about a year and a half and it's probably one of the best moves I ever made because after that. I, I really enjoy extractions. Okay. I don't, I, I felt very uncomfortable doing laying flaps. Okay. I mean. That was, I, a, I, by the way, that was a surprise for me with every, every class, not just your guys is the class before it. And is, is I was surprised at how much I, let me, I'm not even surprised. I had forgotten at how much fear we have of laying a flap mm -hmm. uh, because, you know, I'm, I've so past that now, sure. but I, I, looking back, you know, 10 years ago, I was, I was, a, I mean, I would lay a flap and it would be like taking the pillow off. <laughs> that, yes. would, that would be my flap. Yes. And that's not a flap anymore, you know? Right. Yeah. And, you know, so the, the first weekend being extractions and getting in there and doing. What about the blood and, and the PRF? Have you, have you done any of that? That was new to me. Yeah. Was that so, interesting? Very. Yeah. You see how it makes the blood, the bone change? Yes. And, yeah, and I have to admit that was not something I totally went all in on. Sure, that's okay. From in my package, my bundle. Yeah, but, no, but and I want to get into some of that. That's but, something yeah. I, yeah, I, I would like to yeah. include. Good, yeah, absolutely. So, <clears throat> what about the uh, the live implant part? What, uh, let me back up. Was there enough? And I'm asking this for an honest answer. Mm -hmm. Do you, did you leave comfortable with? Did you feel that you had enough extraction patients? Yes. Yeah. And you're comfortable to go back and do your grafting yes. and all of that. Okay. Yeah. Good. All right. Um, yeah. Well, yeah, I, well. I do. I think it was 
okay. sufficient. I mean, especially in the time frame. I mean, yeah, we had half a day, <laughs> three quarters of a day. Would have been. <laughs> yeah. So yeah. let's move on to the implant part, the mm-hmm. live, which is what you signed up for, right? Right. Is the live patient implants. Uh, talk, talk to us about that experience of doing the live patients. So I was going to say between those two weekends. Oh, yes. Sorry. There was one thing that they asked was that you find five patients. Correct. Within your practice. Mm-hmm. When you went to go find those five patients, were you surprised how easy it was? Um, I, I already had a few you in Thinking mind. in your head before yeah. you even yeah. left, right? Yeah. yeah. So um, I was able to to include those and then, yeah, I ran a across a couple others yeah. in the meantime. So that wasn't, it worked out just fine. Yeah. So what Meredith is talking about is something that's really important is <coughs> that um, I'm a big believer in implementation and implementation doesn't happen. I think you got to hold people accountable and you got to force them a little bit and you got to push people and push people and push people. And I don't like to just to say, Hey, we want you to get started. Uh, one of the things that we are really hold dear in this implant program is is committing everybody to finding five patients and scheduling them the week after weekend two. So that way, what we do <coughs> is you, we ask you to find probably five, six, seven patients so that we can maybe throw some away or uh, dis, you know, discount some or say that these aren't good. And what we do is on weekend two, we have you bring the patient case, the impression, the, the CVCT data. And as a group, we will plan these cases, idealize them. We will design the guides, print the guides, and you will leave the program with five surgical guides for your patients, whether it's one or two units. I mean, if you bring it all on four, we're not going to do that, okay? <laughs> but... We're going to leave with it, and your commitment is that you've pre-scheduled these five patients for that week that you get back. And to me, it's the make or break week because you get back, and well, let's just hear it from you. I, I mean, let's uh, you, let's tell me what was that like? Uh, <clears throat> what was that like getting back and having those you know four or five of the five patients scheduled? Well, I, I think that's a huge boost to yeah. going back and implementing it. Is you know having. Those cases, you encouraging right? that and us having the what we need to yeah, go back and do that. It's not right just then. the it's not just the encouraging you to do it. It's giving it, you everything, yeah, right? So that, that, that all you got to do is put your pants on and go do it, right? <laughs> exactly. And that's a bit that's a, yeah. But listen, there's there is so much. There is so it's like any time it's like the first guy you kiss, a girl you kiss. There's there's so much fear going into that that you just need to get through it. And mm-hmm. and I want to take away everything but what I can't control. I can't control you actually going to do it. Sure. But I can give you the guide. I can say this is a great case. This is what to look for, what not to look for. Here's, you know, he, let's let's practice putting everything together. You know, we can give you everything that we need. And all you got to do is just get up and do it. Yeah. And, and that was critical. I think the Monday I went back, I placed two, yeah. number 20 and 21, side by side. On my first patient. Yeah, you, you you were the first, ju- one. first one. Yeah. Yeah. Cause, and, and another. Creating um, that FOMO. Everybody was. <laughs> yeah. So you you got everyone else so excited because then they were like rushing for their lunch patient, you know, <laughs> couldn't get there fast enough. Yeah. I think the group text. Yeah. I, I I enjoy it a lot. Just hearing from everybody. And yeah. If we could just it. have it all be blue instead of. Well, we are now, now, right? Now, yeah. Now, it is, now yeah. We, are. we pressured one guy into getting an iPhone. <laughs> So now you have to have a CBCT, Seric, and no, an iPhone. iPhone. I'm just Becca, kidding. You have to have a CBCT, a digital a impression. Yeah, you sorry. don't have to have Seric or Serona no, stuff. It's, we're agnostic. Sure. Yeah. But, uh, yeah. But, okay. So that was great. Except what about, for when it comes to phones. Yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> when it comes to phones, you got to have an iPhone. Okay. Um, we're just kidding. Let's back kind up of. for a second, okay? I, I got a little ahead of myself. I apologize. What was the live patient experience like here at the office? Um, it was good. Uh, we, you know, doing the, uh, I guess probably the most nervous thing I was about was the, doing the PRF, drawing the blood. blood. This is not. It's not anything we do normally. Uh, exactly. We stick needles right. in people all the time. <laughs> right. Just but not in the Not in the arms. <laughs> you could draw blood from the mouth, <laughs> but not that big vein on the arm. Exactly. So that was a little unnerving yeah. to me initially, but, um, but as far as placing the implants i mean 
pretty straightforward. I mean, we had mapped out everything and talked about the cases and reviewed them beforehand. Um, you know, we had mentors that are there, yeah. chair side to kind of if you know if we do have a concern or make yeah. making sure we're doing the right tooth. And <laughs> <laughs> well, we are worried about that sometimes, <laughs> especially in your operatory. But yeah, no, I'm messing. Um, yeah. So one of the things that we do is is um, uh, we have a dedicated mentor in each operatory, mm-hmm. uh, so uh, they're instructed to be absolutely helpful, but not to do things sure. uh, unless asked. Mm-hmm. And uh, so, and they're good people. I mean, yeah. they're, and they're just everyday dentists, just like you, and uh, and all of that. So that part's fine. Did you feel that you had enough experience to go back and and get going? Yes, yeah, I do. Yeah. Mm-hmm. How important was the guided part of all of this? Um, huge. Yeah. I, I mean, it's you do all the planning on a computer, and yeah. the guide is just yeah. So I, I just find dropping in. What I what I find, and I, I hope all the other uh, all our competitors stay this way, is I just find I find it amazing that more implant places aren't moving to a, a digital approach to this because mm-hmm. it's what the market is doing. Mm-hmm. I mean, that's and I, I don't I've never subscribed to this. Well, you know, you got to beat your chest and do it free handed, you know, to mm-hmm. earn the right to do it guided. I'm like the opposite. I'm like, <laughs> why would I not take the easy way? Right. And then, you know, and, and certainly there's there's a time where you need free handed. A guide may not fit, you know, mm-hmm. a drill may be too long, you know, any number of things may happen. But I think when you get enough reps in, this, you know, with the surgical part, the flap, all of that stuff, the drilling part becomes, you know, becomes a little bit easier sure. as you do it. So I've always believed that. All right, so so you, so you decided that we were a good fit. You came in, you mm-hmm. you got your reps in, you got some live patients, you got some confidence. You know, we we encourage you, and you were phenomenal at this part. Is to have your five patients. We mm-hmm. got you your guide. You got your five patients scheduled. Talk to us about now. now we're back. Now you're you're out of the Kool Aid <laughs> world. Okay, you're mm-hmm. out of hey, I can do anything I want because you know I'm ready. Rah rah rah. And then you get back to the office, and it's hey, I got a two hygiene checks, I got a filling to do, I got all this mm-hmm. other stuff. And and what frustrates me as an educator is how people spend so much money and and then don't always go back and do this stuff. Mm-hmm. And and for me I feel I feel <clears throat> I personally feel like a little bit of a failure when that does happen. So what allowed you to go back and be successful? I think that verdict's still out, but <laughs> well, I'll argue that that yeah. you're, you're being successful because you placed ten times more implants in the last three months than you did your entire career. Sure. So, and you have more planned, cause, right? Because yeah. you're going to Sully's office, Rick's yes. office. Yes. Yeah. Um, I I don't feel like I have the staff on board yet. Okay. More in terms of kind of what you've been. Um, Mentioning lately about just having scanners available right. in the hygiene rooms right. and things like that, which is kind of the direction I've been wanting to go. Yeah, there's a lot of economic sure. parts to that too. Right? Sure, and um, but you know, having them being able to scan, go ahead and review the case preliminarily to you know okay. make sure it's a good case, a good yeah. a potentially a good case before I even come in. Well, at least you know, even if they don't know what they're doing. At least make Look it ready like so it. that so that, that I can come in and it, it focus on that sure. and not be like, all right, open it up, let's do this. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, right. absolutely. Yeah, so that's still part of the process of I think what, getting on board with. What did your team think when you got back and you guys actually did this? Um, they were excited. Yeah, yeah. I mean, because so many times patients, well, I've always referred them out to the right. oral surgeons, periodontist, and. Um, always not 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 every patient, but you know a lot of them say, "Well, I don't want to see anybody else. Yeah. I want, want you right. to do it." And I'm like, "I can't do that." Yeah. <laughs> so, um, so to be able to keep it in house, and you know, that's that's encouraging to to the staff to 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 be able to not have to send the referrals yeah. out. And all right, so let's t- let's go back to Monday morning. Okay. What were you feeling beforehand? <laughs> because you placed your two on number 20 and 21. That was your first case that you were doing. Did you sleep your... that night? 
Very little. I'm <laughs> why? Why? Why is that? Hey, listen. Just, just so you know, I still wake up at three o'clock in the morning, like clockwork. When I have big, bigger, for me now, it's bigger cases, not onesie mm-hmm. twosies. Mm-hmm. But like last week, this last week, I had a half arch. Or when I have, you know, a more complicated case, I literally, my team asked, did you wake up at three in the morning? Because that makes them feel good <laughs> that I'm waking up nervous because I'm, they know I'm mentally Thinking prepared and mm-hmm. I'm, getting in, I'm getting in the game, you know, I'm getting in game mode. Yeah. And, and I think that's, you know, going over in your mind everything. Am I missing something? Because it's still. St- still somewhat new yeah. to me mm-hmm. and even though we go through and kind of laundry list everything out of what we need and what needs to be handy when we right. get ready for surgery did i miss something and what, so this is part of the and unknown. how much time did you schedule for that uh two hours two hours and more mm-hmm. than enough time sure and i to me, the way i ask that because that's an important aspect of this too often we go back and we're not, pre- not we're not prepared like we ask you to be prepared right mm-hmm. and then you try to fit this in and then you find an hour block and can you do it in an hour sure but there's a lot there's a lot of new there's there's as much fear for your team as there is for you mm-hmm. they like the number of parts and pieces that are involved in this mm-hmm. and just the setup the tearing down of a, a separate handpiece wheeling it in plugging it in you got to have enough time. It's not about how fast we can. You know, I, I get on myself or some of my other team members is that, yeah, it may take me an hour to do something, but that's not that's not how long it takes on the schedule because mm-hmm. there's the time leading up to it that the team's with the patient, the time when I walk out, the team's with the patient, the time of getting all this stuff. So there, it's more than it's more than just us, the dentist, that's yeah. involved in that. Yeah. Okay. So you were super nervous. Yes. That's okay. We're all super yeah. nervous. Yeah. What did you, what did you, what time was your patient schedule at? What time? Yeah. Like nine o'clock, 10 o'clock? Um, yeah, I think it was late morning. Okay. And probably about 11. So how did you feel about 11 o'clock after you were done? Um, good. I feel good. good. I mean, you know. I, Relieved. <laughs> <laughs> Ready to take a nap. <laughs> um, and I posted it to our group yeah. text and got it done. And Everyone was, was cheering you on. Yeah. So that was, that was encouraging to. To be able to step back and, you know, see that I did do it and it's everything. It's a sense of accomplishment. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. I think you're minimizing it, man. I bet you your ass was grinning from ear to ear. <laughs> Probably so. Okay. You were high-fiving people. Trying to take everyone to lunch, calling yeah. off the rest of the day. You're like, we're done. We're done. Cancel all the fillings. <laughs> I have no. thought that. <laughs> no more fillings today. We're done. So I have seen um, on your Facebook or Instagram or something, the way your team has everything organized, all the parts and pieces. You were telling me all the systems and lines. Laundry list, and mm-hmm. I know your wife had a lot to do with this. Um, but what did that take? Did she have that ready by? Did was that has that been a work in process? Yes. Okay. Yeah. So, because um, remember we had lists for the live patients. So, all my implant parts I had it uh-huh. still in the box they came in yeah. from, from the company initially yeah. and i kept them there because I was you like, don't want to lose yeah, them yeah <laughs> right put it back in the box put it back in the box that stuff's expensive <laughs> it is. and and i had in my mind what i wanted to do you know put the implants and, and labeled the and healing yeah. abutments and all that so it just took a little while to kind of get yeah. all that like i wanted and organized and yeah, yeah and but now that you have it all organized and yes christy did that how much easier is that for your team to be able to just no, oh, it's, it's is, yeah, right? it's going to be, well, like we've just kind of finished up okay. getting that organized. Yeah. Can I don't we think get a I've... picture of that so we can yeah. post it with the show notes? Sure. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I think because I want to copy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It looks really good. <laughs> because I got so many parts and pieces. It's ridiculous. Yeah. Um, yeah so it's, yeah, uh, that, that was, it stayed in the box a while until we got all that ready. And then uh-huh. once we did, I, I don't think I've. I've got one. Actually, actually, I have an implant when we go back Monday. Good for you. So, um, so you I'm, are playing this down. I'm doing. Like, it's well, like, well, I've done okay. Well, I um, you know, you you've you ten ad- xed it. Isn't that the new <laughs> thing? Everything's ten x. Yeah. You, you advised us to you know use a third party lab. Yeah. So I sent it, sent it off and got the case back, and I've just got to. 
we're in transition with assistance right now, sure. so I'm still um, kind of handling, making sure all the parts are there. And, and I, listen, even with to, and by the way, the beginning, I think that's what, normal. Yeah, absolutely. Because I'm just, familiar with it. It's not just normal. Yeah. It's important. Yeah. That's, yeah. Yeah. Because if I'm you, walking them through Because that. your team will typically not ever be more detail-oriented or concerned than you are. Mm-hmm. So if you're not detail-oriented and concerned, they're not going to be as detail-oriented and concerned. Yeah. I want to step back for a second because uh, I think it's an important thing to talk about. Is um, And I also want to clarify in case people, uh, for, for the people that are listening, I firmly believe that we should move towards planning our own cases and printing or milling our own guides. Mm-hmm. But I also firmly believe that when you're getting started, it's the last thing you need to worry about. Sure. Because it's enough stuff to pick out all the parts and pieces, to get the cases, to get your team on board, to worry about all this new stuff and scheduling. The last thing you need to deal with is is planning implants on softwares that most of us aren't comfortable using. So so what Lane's <coughs> talking about is is that we teach you guys how to plan, Mm-hmm. But we can't spend enough time to make you guys great planners. We, right. we just can't. It's, it's, it's not what we're there for. It's a p- component of what we teach. But I'm a big believer in work with your lab. You know, whether it's the manufacturer lab in your case or mm-hmm. if it's a local lab or a national lab. And they're experts at this. And for a few hundred bucks, they will make it super easy. So talk to us about that process. How, so you're using Vulcan right now? Yes. Okay, so mm-hmm. you're using Vulcan from BioRisons <coughs> to make a guide. And so what's the fee on that typically? Like 300 bucks? 340 I think. Plus. After taxes and mm-hmm. everything. So it's about $350. Right. And for that 350 bucks, how does it work? What do, what do they do? What do you do? Um, so I sent them to dot com. Okay. Um, CBCT, you upload it on their website. And then Sarek, I just send it through Connect. Okay. So they have the SSI file, and you go through and put the patient information and what you're warning. Okay. And um, probably within 24, 48 hours, you hear back two. from them. Yeah. And the case is designed, and you review it, approve it. And like I think I had the, the guide back within the week Yeah. from wow. when I sent it. Yeah, that's so. Listen, but I I I I know what's happening. Some dentist is listening to this, and they're going, "Well, I can print my own guide for three dollars." Like, sure, your material cost is three dollars, but mm-hmm. there's time involved in that, mm-hmm. right? And the, to me, what's more important? That's what's more valuable, even than the time and the material. It's it's we're talking about a thirty five hundred dollar procedure. Just get them done. Yeah, you know, just get it done. Yeah. Get it that first three, four months, six months after the class is so important because it, it reinforces with your team how serious you are about this Mm -hmm. and just get started, you know, get whatever barrier it takes to get out of the way. Yeah. Just get started, you know, and and, and I commend you for not getting (coughs) stuck into, well, you know, I can play my own and print my own and, you know, we'll we'll spend so much time never getting around to it and, or it may not be perfect, you know, and, and, um, so I'm glad that you're doing that. Yeah. And, you know, I, I purchased a printer last year, but mm-hmm. hadn't really <laughs> dove into it yet. So um, Until this weekend. Until this weekend. <laughs> and and uh, came up and took the uh, three, 3D printing class. My, pa- my, my so kids really appreciate you, Lane. <laughs> <laughs> I know. <laughs> I know. <laughs> they want to thank you. My, private, my kid's private school thanks <laughs> you. I'm not even Glad sure. I I, I'm not even sure I work for myself. Well, I'm pretty he, uh, sure I work to pay for all that stuff. He uh, doubled this weekend up and brought his 16 year old for her birthday. Yeah. She brought some mm-hmm. friends. So that's the. You're yeah. such a good dad. It's yeah. crazy. <laughs> all right. So um, we've got started. Mm-hmm. We've talked about things. Let's let's talk about one thing I'm seeing a lot of is people take the education, they got the technology, they're ready. And then they get back and the, the, then they get all confused about, they get all dentist about what system to get, you know, and, and they say, well, you know, I can, I can go with XYZ online company and it'll be X, you know, I can get this kit from here and I can use it with this and then get that. And, and there's nothing wrong with all of that stuff other than it just, it's a barrier to getting started. Mm-hmm. So, so, and you made mention that you didn't buy all in on PRF. And maybe not even the piezo surgery unit. Right. Um, so talk to us about what what did you purchase? What what did you what 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 did you go through mentally to say, hey, this is what I want. This is what I don't want. This is what I'm not ready for. And and talk to us about that. 
Um, well, I think I kind of just went through and got the for sure what I needed. Right. You so know, the, that's what I want. What the, is the, what, in your opinion, after getting started, what is it that you needed? Yeah. Um, the ref that was there mm -hmm. had put together a couple of um, proposals. Right. Uh, and as far as, you know, what implant specific size yeah. and things like that, I had no idea. But, yeah. you know, they have a, they have a better yeah. idea and appreciation. So, but a guided kit mm -hmm. and then. Um, a number of screws. Yes. Okay. And, you know, healing abutments sure. and implants. And um, I did lay off on the. Um, PRF. PRF. Yeah. And, and also the Austell okay. for the time sure. being. No problem. But that's, I think the Austell is what I'll probably be getting next. Good. And then, then the PRF. And so so, so, so it's just a. And as a side note, why the why the ISQ Austell versus PRF? Uh, next, you yeah, mean? Yeah, next. Because mm -hmm. um, I feel like I can do. I mean, the PRF is is definitely a game changer, but it's That's not quite, sure. n as necessary sure. as the ISQ. And there's no right or wrong answer on this, by the way. The reason right. I'm asking is I just want people that are listening to understand you don't have to buy everything. Yeah. And you, I, I want, I want to, and I'm asking very honestly, we didn't make you leave thinking you needed to buy everything. No, no. Not yeah, I want, because I'm a big believer. You just need what it takes to get started. Yes. You know what you need to do? You need to sell a sinus lift, then go buy whatever instruments you need. That stuff will show up in two days. Yeah. There's, there's very little in dentistry now that we can't literally get in two or three days mm -hmm. when we sell the case. Mm -hmm. You know, and, and and so I'm, you know, and I'm I'm like, listen, it's going to cost you fifty dollars more for the implants. Just buy fifty dollars more for the implants, and don't buy fifty of them. Don't try to save a thousand dollars and end up with ten thousand dollars worth of stuff that you're not, not going to use. It, it doesn't, mm -hmm. it doesn't make any sense. So I'm a big believer in just, you know, there is a number. There is it's like, like, don't buy less than ten or fifteen or whatever the number. I mean, you believe in yourself. Number one, you need at least five or six because we've committed you. To, right. We've committed you to placing that many. <laughs> right. You know, the week you get back. But, yeah, I want people to understand that, that you don't have to buy everything. Mm -hmm. And and from my perspective, you don't have to buy Anything. the company that support. You have to buy something if you want to be serious. But you well, know. I mean, from, <laughs> yeah. from that from the company. Course. Right. Yeah, right. you don't have to buy anything by Horizons. It's okay. Right. You know, they're a great company. They support us. I think they have great prices, and they're a good general dentist implant company. Mm -hmm. And they have a broad range of products. Mm -hmm. And, and they provide implant planning services, and they provide, you know, a, you know, abutment create. They provide a lot of stuff that that's good. Yeah. But they're not the cheapest in town, and and that's okay. I mean, I think that's that's fine. So, what would you tell other people that that are that that <coughs> want to place implants? What is it meant to your practice economically? What is it meant to you egotistically? You know, all of those things. Um. Economically, I think it's, I think the potential is probably beyond my comprehension right now. I mean, you know. It's well, just, you're probably still in the phase where you haven't paid it, or you haven't earned back what you spent. Right. Yeah, absolutely. Right. right. Um, I mean, the class is what, 15 grand, Meredith? Not even. Something. Let's, yeah. Well, we should be charging 50. Yeah. Let's go, go with that. Okay. I was 20. What are you talking about? <laughs> exactly. You better ask Meredith for a discount. She's pocketing some of that. And then what, what do you think you spent in startup costs? 15, 16, 20? I, I don't know what the numbers are these days. Um, yeah, probably 12, 14. Okay. So it's about a $30,000 game to get, to get into yeah. implant. Cost of travel, all of that stuff. Right. The course, yes. the, you know, enough to get by. It's a, it's if you're thinking about getting to implant dentistry, it's a thirty thousand dollar buy. Mm -hmm. Is that what you expected? About yes. what you expected? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. And Which then, well, my argument's going to be you're close to getting your money back. Yes. Okay. Right. You, there's a, there's an overhead of doing dentistry. Don't get me wrong. Right. Okay. So it's, it, to me, it's not just revenue that pays that off. Mm -hmm. Okay. Because there's a cost of doing business. But but, I mean, within three or four months. Mm -hmm. I mean, and that's not, and then, then this is a lifelong, it's a, it's a lifelong product that you can provide service. for your service, yeah. service provide for your yeah. patients, you know? Exactly. And, 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 and frankly speaking, you're just in the infancy of what you're able to do. You're not doing sinus, necessarily doing sinus lift cases. You're not doing cases that need lateral grafting. You're not necessarily doing half arch cases. You're not necessarily doing overdenture cases. Right. You know, there's, see, the one thing about, I tell people about implants that I didn't understand 
was that was that it's not the one unit implant. It's it's that that that's the gateway drug into <laughs> the two unit implant or the the four unit implant, <laughs> mm-hmm. and 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 then it just keeps going and going and going. It's 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 pretty amazing. You can people have built implant only practices. I'm not an advocate of that necessarily, but but you're just scratching the surface. Mm-hmm. And, and and let's talk about this. Is there a shortage <laughs> of potential patients in your practice for this? I was going to say no. that. No. 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 No, no I mean, they want and they want you. Yes. Yeah. Right. How are you making it affordable for your patients? How are you getting them to say yes? Um, we're doing some payment plans. Okay. Um, that's something Christy's been helping out with. Good. Um, we're we're also in the process of have a um, membership plan. Okay. Just in general, sure. for, you know, for those that don't have insurance to to help. I can so. tell you, in our office, Dory's. Selling the Raleigh Dental Arts Smile Club. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so Our front office is, she's selling it away. <laughs> Funny story. A good friend of mine, he owns uh, the kebab place that we had yesterday. Okay. For lunch. Mm-hmm. And uh, so he's a good friend. We take care of him at the office, all of that. He came in, and Dory has never met him before. And he came in, and he doesn't have insurance. And she comes in, and she goes, um, uh, we don't want to see that you have any insurance. Do you have any insurance? He goes, I'm on the T-Bone insurance plan because, you know, he's on my plan, right? And, and she goes, okay. She goes, would you be interested in our smile club? <laughs> and I'm, I'm waiting for the day that my dad or mom walks in and she, she offers my parents the smile this club. This is our new front office and she is just selling this new. We have our new. Um, we have a membership plan. Membership. <laughs> program to and just everyone and it, uh in september you know we're setting our goals for 2021 and mm-hmm. you know she said she wanted to have 30 by the end of the year and t was like oh no we're gonna have like five the, yeah. what, no mm-hmm. no way and she did it good for yeah. her yeah. so it's uh anyway i digress yeah. so back to the affordability how, how are you getting patients to say yes so you're making it affordable i i'm assuming you're taking cbcts on patients yes you know, when they're missing a tooth, you're virtually planning it right in the hygiene chair. You're showing them what's possible, and and you're giving that, people a chance to say yes. That's where I'm. I okay. want to get better, or, you I, know, more. Yeah. yeah. How can we help you with that? What's holding you guys back from doing more of that? Um, just getting staff. All right. So let me let me back up for a second mm-hmm. here. Okay. So let me go through my checklist. Mm-hmm. Do you take CBCT on most patients that come to your practice? No. Okay. Great. No. So first step, so, so we're going to walk through all the steps, okay? Mm-hmm. Because I'm a believer in one plus one plus one plus one equals a bazillion, mm-hmm. okay? So you, what you're saying is we keep going to the team members, okay? But they're, a, they're one of the bazillion, they're one of the one plus one plus one, mm-hmm. okay? So let's walk through some of these, okay? Are you, taking, are you taking cold memes on close to every patient? And the answer needs to be yes. Sure. Okay. So one of the things that you can do to make that easier is is encourage and just take cone beams on on every, quote unquote every patient. Right. Okay. Okay. All right. That's the first thing I, I look at. Okay. The second thing is, do you have the implant planning software in every operatory? Yes. Yes. Okay. Great. Mm-hmm. So that's the second thing I look at. Is hey. For, we got to have the software so that you can pull it up because yep. we're not wheeling things around. Right. And I absolutely despise the whole, let me go to my office and look at it and come back mm-hmm. because that's a, I'm trying to, I'm most people try to get to 10,000 steps. I'm trying to stay below a thousand <laughs> steps each day. Okay. <laughs> so, I'm with you. <laughs> so, so, <laughs> So, so I'm going to stay below a thousand if steps. If he goes to his office, he's probably not coming I'm back. I'm not coming back. Okay? You're wheeling me back, okay? So, so we're taking CBCTs, which you got to do better at that, mm-hmm. okay? You've got operatories that uh, are, are capable of doing this, okay? Yes. The next thing is we need to, now we need to work on a team success path, mm-hmm. okay? And that's what you've been focused on, but we got a little bit to do on the front end there, okay? okay. Our t- team success path would be, do they know which software and how to turn it on? Mm-hmm. Okay, so in your case, I think you're using Sedexis. Sedexis. Great, so do they know how to start Sedexis? Mm-hmm. Yes. Okay, great. Mm-hmm. Wonderful. You'd be surprised. Right. Okay, do they know how to start Galaxis within Sedexis? No. Okay, great. So now that's the next on my list is, hey, because Sedexis just opens up the file, mm-hmm. now you've got to open up Galaxis to actually do the implant planning. Correct. So I just want, so my, to me, success would be, can I walk into the room and just have the implant planning software up? Mm-hmm. Because then you're then 
you know, you're ready to work instead of having to hold, you know, because it takes a minute or two to open that stuff. Yeah. And it's annoying and nobody wants to look dumb in front of patients. Okay. Right. Then success path number part of that, the third step of the team training would be, do they know how to put an implant in the in any site space. <laughs> in, the space. in the space upside down sideways <laughs> i don't care do they know how to pick the implant and put it in the spot and the answer is probably no, no. to that right now right Correct. so then so once we teach them how to start sedexis which they've got mm -hmm. now we got to teach them how to start galaxis mm -hmm. okay so they can start the implant planning software the next thing we need to do is teach them to put any implant drag and drop and i don't care yeah. what size it is what right. length it is what brand it is I don't care about any of that stuff. Mm -hmm. Okay, so let's go there. Okay, because oftentimes what happens is we get stuck on trying to teach them A to Z, and I just want them to do A. I call it boiling them slowly. I want them to do A, B, C, D, and we'll eventually get to Z, and they'll never have known that they learned 26 things yeah. because you'll just do it one by one by one. Mm -hmm. So once I teach them how to just put a implant in that area, now – now I want to teach them what implant I want to put in, mm -hmm. okay? And for me, I make it simple for my team. I go, if you're planning a molar, stick a 4.6 millimeter implant in there. Mm -hmm. If you're planning a premolar, stick a 4.2 millimeter implant in there. If you're planning an anterior, stick a 3.8 millimeter implant in there mm -hmm. from the bio horizon sizes, okay? Right. And, and just put that in and just make them all 10 and a half millimeters long. Yeah. So that way, when I walk in, they've got the right size, and then the, then the next step beyond that is I teach them how to tilt and move the implant and kind of get it centered between the roots, centered between the bone. Mm -hmm. and, and, and by that time, I'm already in there. Okay. Yeah. So, so I look at everything as a success path of doing that. And then, and then for me, where I've gotten with my team now is, is, would you say that almost everybody can at least put the implant in? Oh, yeah. Okay. So yeah. we're at a point where they, they may not know which implant, that, not all yeah. of them know which implant implant they're putting in but they at least get the implant in yeah. mm -hmm. and the patients by the way are like oh my gosh if she can do that what can he do mm -hmm. right and or they have no idea they don't even know the x-ray they're like wow when they see the hygienist or the assistant put an implant up there yeah they're just amazed at the technology and they're like everyone here knows what they're doing yeah yeah. No and they're just impressed. You could you could put a baseball bat in there. Right. And, That's and what I mean. Like, it around. I mean that, that, you, literally, you could put like a molar this big in there. <laughs> they wouldn't know the difference, right? But they're impressed. Yeah. And then the next thing that we've talked on, and this is what we focused on the last few months, and it's paid dividends for me, is now we're teaching everybody that when you do an implant plan, and if the patient doesn't say no, that means we need a digital impression. Okay, so I want to repeat mm -hmm. that. If we plan out an implant for a person and they don't say no, I need a digital impression. Sure. I didn't say if they say yes, because there's a difference. So th it's not if they say yes, I need a digital impression. If they don't say no, I need a digital impression. Mm -hmm. Okay. And the reason I want that is because then the next patient visit can be what? Placement. I can do all my planning. Mm -hmm. We can do all our financial arrangements virtually if we needed to. You know, all of those things. So what I'm trying to get the success path to is getting them to help the patient say yes and getting them to get everything for me so that way the patient's next visit is placement. Mm -hmm. I'm not proud of saying this, but based on, you know, I'm only in the office three days a week, three weeks a month, okay? Mm -hmm. So um, there are many patients that I meet the first time is the day I'm placing their implant. Okay, and that I, I'm not proud of saying that, but I'm also yeah. I am proud of saying that, right? Yeah. Because we've got we've got things in place over time to where we make it to where even if they don't know what they're doing, I'm like, listen, plan it wrong, say yes when we can't do it, just get me the info, mm -hmm. so that way when I can do it, I hate bringing people back. Yeah, yeah. But cool. they've seen another doctor in the office, and then yeah, he's then been we, able yeah. to plan plan yeah. it after. Then gotcha. It's not like so. these things that you yeah. know. And I'm doing it from here. Mm -hmm. I'm doing it from anywhere. I just sure. log in, remote in, mm -hmm. yeah. log me in or whatever we're using. Splash Top, I think, is what we're using. Mm -hmm. And uh, able to do that. So I've kind of laid out the success path to get your team on board. Okay. Okay. So the only other thing I would coach you on is, is we need to just take more CBCTs. Mm -hmm. Okay. Because probably, probably one of the things that's happening is that you're selectively taking CBCTs. And then mm -hmm. by the time you ask for it, it's a pain for them to go get it. Yeah. Because they got to get the patient up. 
They got to take the stupid napkin off. They got to go to the CBCT machine. Someone else is using it. Mm-hmm. They got to put the weight. patient through it. <clears throat> and then no matter what machine, what computer you have, it's five minutes, mm-hmm. six minutes, seven minutes. By right. the time they do get the patient up, go there, take the x-ray, sit back down, have the stupid thing process and all of that, it's seven minutes, eight minutes. Yep. And then you're nowhere to be found. Right. Okay. So that's why I'm an advocate of taking the CBCT on, quote unquote, everyone on the front end. Mm-hmm. And then that way, that part's out. Have the software in every room, Mm -hmm. so that part's out. And then now we're dealing with the human being component of it. Mm -hmm. And then then the training part of that is don't try to train them A to Z. Train them in baby steps. Baby steps, yeah. Boil them slowly, Mm -hmm. you know. And uh, the next thing you know, and some people, like, you know, Megan, my hygienist, is at at a point where basically I walk in and she'll tell me this is not an immediate case. You know, she's she's at that stage where we're like looking at molars. She's like, I don't. I mean, she's probably, you know, she's always saying I think, right? Mm-hmm. But she's like, I I know this one's not an immediate, mm-hmm. okay? Or she's like, yeah, that's a maybe. Or this one, I'm pretty positive it's it is one. So we're getting to that stage with different ones, and then at least everybody's at a stage where they'll get me the intraoral scan mm-hmm. and the CBCT and have it pre-planned, so that way my job is that much easier. Yeah. So that's kind of the success path on okay. getting more to say yes, because you got to get at bats right. on that. Right. We went on a tangent there. I apologize. <laughs> that was good though. Yeah. I yeah, think I a lot of people, yeah, I appreciate a it. lot of people are in that place too. Yeah. And then the affordability and all that, then that comes into place mm-hmm. because, uh, affordability. Same kind of thing. Yeah, Moving slowly mm-hmm. with that. Yeah. Getting it into place. Yeah. You know, so. I, 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 you know, I remember I went to my first sedation program. This was, uh, 2001, 2002 is Dallas, Texas. It was provided by docs. There are 400 some dentists in the room, and I was like, "Holy smokes!" It's, it's, you know, and 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 they make it. And it's this is not a knock on docs. I just took their IV sedation course. Mm-hmm. I, I love those guys. Um, even though we compete with them on the oral sedation side with <laughs> Brian McGuse program, yeah. But but my point is, is Which I, I also to, took. Yeah, absolutely, and, <laughs> and that's great too, right? Yes. And you're going back and you're doing sedations, right? Yes, yes, right. we are. What's that like? Um, it's good. We don't, we probably do, uh, a few a quarter. I mean, it's not something right. a bunch. I bet you'll start doing more okay, now so, that you're so doing it. Let me, let, let me back up because you're either being too humble or you're being too hard on yourself. Yeah. Okay. Both. Okay. <laughs> hey, uh, we're probably only doing two or three a quarter. How many were you doing before? Zero. Zero. Yes. Okay. <laughs> so you're two or three X. Yes. All right. So let's, let's, and you just, we're talking about a year ago, right? Yeah. Uh, mm, two? Yes. Uh, maybe two years yeah. ago. Two years ago. Year, year yeah. two. Come on. Mm-hmm. All right. So let me give you some advice on the sedation part. Okay. Okay. We don't, we don't um, just wait for patients to ask for sedation. Mm-hmm. I tell patients which cases we're going to sedate them on. Okay. Okay. So, so I, and sometimes I'll just say, I'm not going to charge you for it. Okay. I, I might be like, Lane, I'll tell you what, we're going to do all this work and I encourage you to get sedation. I'm not even going to charge you for it. This is a case you've got to get sedated on. Mm-hmm. Okay, because I want them to be sedated because I know it's going to be it's going to be better for me. Sure. Selfishly, right? So I'll encourage you to use sedation as a tool for yourself, because what will happen there is you'll have more patients that get sedated, more people will talk about it, your team will get more comfortable with it, the more they'll talk about it, mm-hmm. and, and then all of those things. And then I'll also tell you, uh, I don't know if we've talked if you've been through the sales funnel with me, but I, I'll encourage you that to set a goal that every month I need to I need to sedate four people or three people, whatever it is. Mm-hmm. And I want you to write that number big on a wall somewhere and then have check marks beside it. And there's got to be a little carrot for your team. Maybe it's a, maybe it's a spa day. Maybe it's, you know, yeah. some toes or nails. Right? So they can get those long nails like this or something. But <laughs> yeah. well, what is that hair thing you guys are talking about, Michelle? Balliage. Balliage? Or balayage or whatever the heck that is. I don't know what that is. That might be more expensive. That's getting your hair colored, yeah. <laughs> whatever, okay, but not for me. You know, some carrot there. And, yeah. I, and it's amazing. Because those will be bigger cases. Yeah. Sure. Naturally. And most of the time. Absolutely. And, and, and I'm a big believer if you write it on the wall, you tell people it's important, you say, hey, listen, if it's so important to me, if we get this, I'm going to get you this. I'm not a big believer in money goals, money financial rewards always. Mm-hmm. There's a component of that in our practice, but I'm a big believer in team events. You but know, you maybe, have to do it together. If you can't yeah. come, you don't if, get if it. You, if you, yeah. yeah, like, listen, Let's here's the day. That. Here's Let's the day that. we're going to the nail salon. Right. No oh, rain checks. No rain no checks. checks. Yeah. So we're going, if you want to make it great. It's, it's really not a reward. It's really a team 
yeah. bonding experience. Sure. Yeah, it's yeah. Part, that's a component. It's a double thing, you know. Yeah. yeah so, um, so, so I would tell you that you want. I want you to do more sedations. So I want you to make it a three times <coughs> per month. Or what? I don't. I, you got. You mm-hmm. got to get your number right, mm-hmm. and, and you got to make it big and bold, written down, and have the check marks next to it. Have the have the 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 picture of the spa. Mm-hmm. I promise you, if you put that up, you'll get it done, and it's so worth. How many team members you got? Um, six. Six. It's what is the what is the nail thing these days? 30, bu- Thirty bucks. Forty bucks. Yeah. Well, you can, we'll get the cheap version. <laughs> okay, they can pay for the no, upgrades. No gel. <laughs> <laughs> they, they can pay for the upgrades. <laughs> so, Forty bucks. I don't know. So, so you'll spend two hundred fifty bucks. <clears throat> Sure. To get three or four sedations a month is totally worth it, right? Mm-hmm. And on yeah. top of that, you're bonding with your team, right? Which I know you already do, right. yeah. but you're getting them to bond with each other yeah. too. So uh, th- there's a lot of benefits in some of those things. So yeah. Anything else, Mayor Bear? Not that I can think. Michelle, of. Michelle, can you think so. of anything? Uh, Lane, thank you so much. Thank I you. know you were nervous. Thank you for having me. Yes, I was. Is this your yeah. first podcast yes. Uh, experience? Yes. <laughs> well, thank Probably you for being last. on. So it <laughs> we, should be uh, the last, man. Are you no, me? we really, well, maybe we'll follow up with you in six, eight months and see how you're doing with everything because yeah. you have the sleep course come in. So, yes. you know, you're you're upgrading and putting in a lot of new things in your practice and we'll see how the team, you know, takes off with everything. Okay. I want to talk about one last thing. Okay. Okay. It's a little bit of a pitch here, okay? okay? So you finished your class in October, correct? Yes. All right. So that's been, what, four months now? Mm-hmm. Do we still communicate with each other? Yes. Yeah. So I, I, I'm, I'm just, uh, I, I'm so proud of the community component of what we do. We try to communicate. We try to make it easy for us. We try to make it in a place that's easy for all of us. But we don't stop when the class ends. I mean, right. that's just not, that's just not how we are. Our goal is to communicate. You can send us cases. You mm-hmm. can say, hey, what do you see? it Like Shivy the other day posted one. Hey, what do you think about this? And yeah. it's... Somebody it's, was stuck on their software or something. Yeah, you know, all yeah. little things, right? Yeah. And I'm even... I mean, not that... You know, we have the group text, which yeah. is nice, but like I've had one or two little hiccups yeah. come on that I didn't really feel like was group text worthy. Sure. It but probably is, but it's comfort level. Just send yeah. it Yeah, but I mean, I... I felt totally comfortable yeah. texting you yeah. and just asking you something real quick yeah. or and Rick or yeah. And yeah. I got to give well, a mentors. Big, we yeah. I got to give a know. big shout out to Rick. I mean, this is this is above and beyond. Okay, like you've got a case, and we're so committed to you doing your first sinus lift. Is that what it is? No, it's uh, it's actually number eight. Okay, your first and immediate. Your first anterior immediate. Yes. Right? So so that's a scary that's a scary case, right? Right. right. So I remember growing what growing up. <laughs> <laughs> this was only a few years ago. <laughs> getting started is what you I mean. <laughs> getting started, growing up in, in the implant world, that if I didn't have Uday, my oral surgeon, to be able to do what you're doing with Rick at, mm-hmm. I wouldn't be where I'm at. So, and, how, you know, I would just take my page. I just right. call Uday and say, "Hey, I got." You would it. just refer it to him. I, I was going to refer to him. Yeah. Right, and he say. Almost like Rick said in this case, mm-hmm. ended up doing is I was I re- normally refer to it. He's like, "Why are you referring me this case?" Yeah, you can it, do it. He's like, "You can do it." I'm like, "I don't know." He goes, "All right, here's what you do: you come over with the patient, mm-hmm. I'll assist you. You do it, and then you don't have to refer this to me. But yeah. I'm always here for you, sure, mm-hmm. right?" And so that's what happened with you. You exactly. have number eight extraction, immediate placement, probably an immediate temp or something like that. Exactly. All the things that's just like, listen, you're just getting started, right? That's like, that's not the one you want to do alone. Right. And so you're going to Rick's office, one of our mentors, Rick yes. Sullivan, and you guys are doing it together. Yes. That's awesome. That's, that's mm-hmm. a, see, to me, that's, that's what we're about. It's the yeah. community. It's the constant support. It's the, hey, let's, let's make you successful. And I just, you know, I, I hope this retreat just adds on to that connection, uh-huh. the ability to stay together and geek out together and talk about things and just have... Dentistry needs a place where the private practitioner can can thrive. There's so many things where it's all about multi-location business, and there's nothing wrong with any of that. But the majority of us are solo dentists, you know, or mm-hmm. one or two dentists in a single location. You know, we, we need a place for single location dentistry, and that's what we want to be. We want to be a place where where it's not bad to be not the most profitable dentist. Yep. You know, it's not bad to be not the, the dentist with 10 locations or on your way to 10 locations. 
Uh, I, I want to be the lifestyle dentist. You know, that's what I think I've built in my own practice. It's a practice that fits my lifestyle. It yeah. helps me not have to work sometimes, but I still got to work sometimes and helps me focus on doing more of the dentistry I like. And uh, th- there's lots of little steps to go with that. And with so the I killer know. smile club. <laughs> yeah, with the RDA <laughs> Smile Club. With oh, that's all that is only happening because Dory is relentless about it. She's probably good. She missed the whole week because she was sick. She's probably kicking herself that she missed she's, some Smile like, Club opportunities. Oh my God, I'm a week behind on my Smile Club goal for the year. Uh, Lane, thank you so much. Yeah. Thank Thanks you for, for being having a supporter me. and a good fan. And, thank you. Uh, thank you for all that you do for your community and and your team members and. Don't settle for anything less than what you deserve, man. Yeah. Thank you. And your friendship with us. We appreciate you. Well, I appreciate you both. Thank you. (coughs) All right, everybody. Thank you for listening. We'll see you guys next week on the T-Bone Speaks podcast where God knows what we'll be talking about (laughs) because we are not pre-planning our episodes like we're supposed to, Michelle. (laughs) Okay. (laughs) But we're having a good time. And you know what? We're going to make Michelle come on. In fact- Maybe we'll be live. You know what? We'll do Ortha. No. We're going to bring Michelle on. We're going to talk about taking over ortho and, go, and building it back up to what it was, okay? That will be the next podcast episode after Lane. All right, you in? All right, perfect. All right, <laughs> peace out, everybody. Thanks so much for listening to T-Bone Speaks with Dr. Tarun Agarwal. Remember to keep striving for excellence, and we'll catch you on the next episode.